I've always been interested in science from a very early age. Uh, during my undergraduate uh, years at the University of Wisconsin, uh, I started studying molecular biology. Um, I found that, uh, although very interesting, uh, lab work uh, left a little something missing for me. Um, I had always uh, thought about going into medicine, uh, as I had some family members who had pursued medical careers. And I made the decision uh, midway through my college years uh, to go ahead and apply to medical school. Um, and I've been very pleased with that decision ever since. In addition to science and medicine, music's always been a real big part of my life. Um, I grew up in a very musical family. Um, during my undergraduate years, I got myself through uh, college uh, performing in rock and roll bands on the weekend. Um, and uh, that was one of the nice things about the specialty of otolaryngology is that uh, I could incorporate a lot of my musical interests um, in the uh, study of voice as well as uh, uh, study of hearing. Um, all of these things have a direct application to what I do day to day in the office. Um, I, on my free time, I still like uh, music a lot. I like performing. Uh, my family is still very uh, musical, uh, and, and my children are quite involved in musical pursuits. I grew up in a very musical family. Uh, my mother was involved in singing, uh, and I remember that from a very early age. And so when I was back in elementary school, I decided, hey, I'd like to sing as well. So I've been involved in singing uh, in one capacity or another uh, since uh, really my second grade uh, in uh, elementary school. Um, I also have been a trumpet player. Um, I was very active uh, with that instrument uh, through my high school years uh, and into college. Um, I enjoy uh, keyboards and guitars as well. And I've uh, tried to pass that interest along to my children also. I grew up in Wisconsin and did all my training at the University of Wisconsin. And um, you know, by the time I had gone through uh, about 29 years of uh, tough winters up there, I was ready to look at uh, relocating to another and warmer area. Uh, one of the real attractions of Central Florida for me uh, was the performance community down here. Um, I was fortunate enough to train in a program at the University of Wisconsin, which was really breaking new ground as far as the evaluation and treatment of voice conditions. Uh, and I saw Central Florida as a real uh, fertile ground to spread that uh, interest in evaluating and management of uh, singers as well as other voice professional problems um, in an area that really did have a big performance community. The thing I like about being a doctor is that I can take science uh, and I can take my understanding of body processes uh, and I can apply that individually to individual people uh, who have uh, very distinct needs um, and tailor it uh, in each circumstance um, and see the results happen. Uh, it's very gratifying to uh, kind of find out where somebody is coming from, uh, what their specific needs are, uh, and, and take the therapies and the understanding that I have and, and help them to incorporate that into their own situation uh, so that they can really uh, heal themselves. In addition to evaluating and treating voice problems, uh, I also uh, see and treat a lot of chronic sinusitis. I was one of the first physicians to do endoscopic sinus surgery in Central Florida, and I've been at the forefront of new technologies and new techniques uh, in treating uh, sinus disease uh, as they've come available here. Um, so that's one of my big areas of interest as well as voice care, and it does impact on voice care as well too, uh, is evaluating and treating uh, chronic sinus and allergy conditions. When a patient first comes in to see me, uh, their first encounter is going to be with my front desk. And uh, typically, we'll have some history already filled out by that time. Um, hopefully, you may have done that on the web portal. Um, if not, you'll be filling in a sheet with little bubbles that'll give us the uh, information on your basic health uh, and background. Uh, from that point, uh, once registered, uh, you'll come back into the clinical area, um, make your way into one of the exam rooms. And I hope I'll be by very shortly 
shortly after that uh, to start talking with you about the specifics of history as they relate to the uh, particular problem that you've come in with. After going through the specific points in history, uh, we'll go through a physical examination. I'll check the ears, nose, and throat, uh, check the salivary glands, uh, feel for lumps or bumps or nodules in the neck, uh, do an overall general examination, uh, and then kind of hone in on the problem from there. Uh, if it is a voice-related issue, usually at this point uh, we'll be going back to the voice care center uh, to talk with the speech pathologist, have a video stroboscopic evaluation if needed, which is a way to look at the vocal cords and really slow down the vibration see what's going on. Uh, if there's any hearing related issues, we'll go back to audiology, uh, have the hearing tested. If we're evaluating a sinus issue, uh, we may need to do a scope examination at this point. Uh, we also have the capability to do a CT scan, CAT scan of the sinuses in the office at our Winter Park facility uh, on the same day if necessary. At the end of the examination, we'll sit down and go through impressions regarding what's happening with your specific concern I hope not only to send you home with prescriptions and recommendations, uh, but also empower you with a real understanding of what's going on and how to improve your wellness.